HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Oh, that's a cheer we used to do in softball. Uh, what? It's uh, actually Geico. Whenever someone hit a triple, we would wave our bats and yell, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. But we never got to use it because we would only hit home runs. Annoying. The phrase is from Geico because they help save people money. Geico? Yeah, they were our team sponsor. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to gain recognition as a great resource for business owners, aspiring entrepreneurs, sales professionals, business leaders, uh, and that is because of the guests. Um, these are folks who have expertise in particular areas of business, and they join me uh, to share that expertise with all of you. So you can get the answers that you need, the information that you're looking for, and <clears throat> excuse me, you can uh, apply those ideas to your business, so hopefully you can be doing uh, better things and be more successful. Today is no different. Today I am joined by Arielle Schur. Arielle is the CEO and sole founder of ABS Staffing Solutions. Her high-touch, service-oriented approach has been a refreshing change to the industry. Arielle prides herself on developing highly customized relationships with clients so that they can find the right employee matches for any and all employment needs. She set a new standard for the boutique approach to staffing. Her work model is time-intensive, specifically tailored to her clients' specific needs, and all-encompassing to provide the highest quality experience. And we are very fortunate to have her join us again. She was on our podcast once before and uh, gave us a lot of great information. So um, thank you for joining me today, Ariel. Thank you for having me. And I just love your intro. Every time I hear it, I'm like, wow, I really would love to bring you along 
every time I have to talk to anyone <laughs> to intro me. I'm like, that just sounds so great. So oh, thank you. I would love to. <laughs> I'll be part of your entourage. <laughs> Hired. Done. <laughs> so great. So today we're going to talk about um, this remote working thing. And it seems to be all the rage, though I, I think it has some pros and cons and ups and downs and that, and that's part of what we're going to talk about. Um, I, I'd like to talk about like both sides of the equation on this one. So let's start with employees. How would you suggest an employee navigate this whole working remotely thing? Well, I think, you know, there's a few components to take into account. And I think when you say navigate it, you know, there's some people that are seeking that and have been in that type of role. I think when somebody has a current position that the, they are then segueing that position into remote, that can be a little more challenging versus when you start a position that is inherently remote. So those are the different variables that can definitely come into play. And I also think, you know, it's a certain type of person and personality that thrives in that environment and that seeks it. And it's definitely not for everyone. Um, but like most things, it's not one size fits all. So, you know, I think it's important to be cognizant and know the type of worker you are and kind of where you fall in this and how you feel personally about, you know, being aware of both what those pros and cons typically are and how you personally fall within those aspects. Okay. I, I think that makes so, a ton of sense. Yes. Sorry. So, I, I didn't you know, that, like jump in the middle of that, but so keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interesting because I often reflect things, um, to my own personal experience. And when I was working for somebody else and had my first child, I still wanted to work, but I also was breastfeeding and wanted to be home. But in this line of work, you know, you can't just go on maternity leave. Like there's no one else that could interface with my clients and knew them and had that rapport. And, you know, I had cultivated these long-term relationships and they were really based upon me and it was very challenging at the time because this is going back a few years we don't need to talk about how long and you know this was just the beginning of like blackberries and so I got my first blackberry right when I was having my first daughter and I was like oh my gosh this is a game changer this is life changing I can check my emails and not be tied to a computer um and that to me was amazing but I also had a boss who was very much like I need to see you if you're not in my visual and I can't hear you and see you you're not really working and mm -hmm. I used to think that was so provincial and short-sighted because I was like I I'm someone, I don't need someone hovering over me to be productive. Like I'm yeah. self-motivated. I want to succeed. I benefit from it. But, you know, I also am trying to manage and juggle like having a new baby and, you know, all of that. But he really was like insistent that I had to literally physically be in the office. And I remember talking to friends at the time being like, it just doesn't make sense to me. It should be about my productivity, not about my FaceTime, because in the line of work I'm doing, I don't need to be sitting at a desk there. There are certain jobs that you might need to, but for this, it wasn't the case. And it was very hard and frustrating. And that was something when I started my own company, I was cognizant of and wanted to allow women in particular in this case, you know, let's say if they were having a baby and I actually have a, one of my employees, I've got a few employees pregnant while they're working for me. And one thing I relate to them is 
how awesome the flexibility is in this line of work because you really can do most things from home nowadays. And it's amazing to be able to like have that optionality. That being said, you know, it's definitely not for everyone. I know a lot of people that want and need to get out of the house that say, oh, I need that separation. I don't want to just have everything in my home setting and, you know, I'm just going to want to watch TV or snack all day or I'll feel too isolated. And I like the camaraderie and community of being in a work office setting. So, you know, these are all things to think about. And it is a very individual kind of process. And I think there's a lot of components that go into play. And, you know, probably when I was younger, I don't know if I would have like wanted to be working from home because it would feel isolating. Um, Right. I did enjoy kind of the stimulation of being around others and, you know, work happy hours and all of that. Um, Now being older, I'm like, I have no desire, time or interest in that. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't want to have to commute. And it's lovely having the flexibility to do either. Um, But again, I think you know, these are all factors that can come into play. Yeah, it's so, um, I think, I I, I think it's really important for people to know themselves and know whether they're going to be able to make that uh, separation at home where there's a room or there's, you know, some place that is for work and that the, the way they use their time um, I think you have to maybe be more cognizant of uh, what you're doing, you know, when you're doing it, um, mm-hmm. you know, so, so it doesn't really get away from you. Absolutely. I mean, I think time management, being self-motivated, you know, having, like you said, creating a space in your home where this is my workspace, um, and still maintaining some sort of structure and routine and schedule is important because it's amazing how you can get distracted and end up doing different things, non-work related. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, it's one o'clock. What have I done? And I'm still not even dressed, you know? And I also even think like getting dressed still, like not that you have to like look as professional, but I do think there's psychologically something to be said about like, maintaining your routine. Like I like to wake up, get my kids ready, work out and shower and get dressed. Even if I don't have meetings or I'm working from home, I still think it's important and it makes me feel more empowered by feeling good and being in a work mode and mindset because it all is kind of intertwined. Yeah, it's like there's certain rituals that we should maintain. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I even say that to candidates when, you know, they're unemployed. I'm like, you need to maintain structure, routine, and rituals for yourself because it's too easy to sway on the other side. And then it just becomes a domino spiral effect. And you don't want, it's a very slippery slope. And you really have to be mindful to know, like, you know, this is what I'm doing. Set forth your plan, have your time management, and have your workspace. And, you know, be accountable to yourself because you're not in that setting where you have someone looking over your shoulder in the same way. Do you think that... Some people who, in a work environment, are very, um, what's the word I'm looking for, self-motivated, I guess, do mm-hmm. they struggle then if they go to work in a re- you know, remotely, or are they still self-driven, or you know, does it I mean, vary? I, I, again, I think it varies. I think, like I said, even the, your age and phase of life have an influence and impact. Yeah. Um, and, you know, knowing that it can be isolating, you're not able to foster the same type of work relationships 
that you do when you're face to face or grabbing lunch together or even walking by someone's desk or in the bathroom, you know, there's definitely that element and aspect is missing, which probably when I was younger, I would have really felt that void being older. I could care less and I'm happy not to have to talk to anyone else. (laughs) But, you know, I think a lot really is contingent upon, you know, your age and phase and mindset and, you know, who you are as a person. Listen, if you're more of an introvert anyway, and you're just doing, let's say, data processing or entry or IT stuff, and you don't, you wouldn't even be interfacing with people anyway, then, you know, why have to go somewhere and waste time right. commuting and all of that? And, you know, it's both time and costly to have to commute, right? Yeah. So, and on both sides of the equation. So, an employer has to have the space and pay for that space to have employees in a office, and mm-hmm. the employee has to pay to commute there. And it's a huge time component as well. Most people have, you know, forty-five to an hour each way commute, and that right. adds up quickly. Yeah. Yep, I agree. Now, um, shoot, I was thinking of something about that. Oh, I know what it was. It, it's sort of funny for me because when I think back to when I worked in an office, the thing that I hated about working in the office was the distractions there with mm-hmm. people stopping in my office or stopping by my cubicle and just wanting to chat, and I didn't want to. And so it's not just that working remotely has it, its distractive challenges. That can happen a lot in the workplace as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. Again, I think they're different distractions, but they obviously right. exist. Um, and that's why, you know, especially let's say you're transitioning from an office setting to a remote setting, you know, there's going to be that initial transitionary period where you're getting reacclimated and figuring out what the new distractions are just like when you're in a new office and you see oh that's the person that tends to talk to everyone you know I need to put my head down when she walks down near me you know and you know whether it's kids or whether it's your favorite show or people friends calling you you still have to you know internally be that person to regulate that right so Let's flip it to the other side, to the employer, because there are employers like the one you had who think they have to see you, that, you know, it's a trust thing, that if they can't see you, then you're not working, which I've had them too. I think everyone has. Mm -hmm. Um, Is it possible for them to get comfortable with the idea of some people working remotely? Yes. I mean, I definitely think there's measures and KPIs that employers can set in place to have something tangible to track. Um, You know, to be honest, I am moving towards a more remote model for my company um, because it just, in the line of work I do, there is that ability to be flexible. It enables me to hire people across the country and work and expand my business as well and you know the truth is like for a lot of this work like you can put in as much or as little as you want I often find you know a lot of my remote workers I have commission only because this way I don't have that feeling Ah. of like oh my gosh I'm paying someone and I don't know if they're working you know, because invariably that doesn't feel great. Um, But when you don't have that and it's, you know, whatever they put in, they get out and we both benefit. I find that works perfectly for both of us because we both have, you know, they're more motivated because if they're not producing, they're not making any money. And it's a win-win. So you mentioned um, a minute ago about uh, there are KPIs that, that an employer can put in place and whatnot. And um, 
So talk to me some about, because I, I, one of the things I'm hearing is that this whole new age flexibility thing can have a negative impact on someone's performance and therefore, you know, their ability to advance in a company, but, you know, that hurts the company as well. So um, it, it sounds to me like if a company is going to go that way, they have to really think about how they're going to benchmark whether they're whether the remote workers are uh, getting the results that they expect, and if that and the remote worker knows what that expectation is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I think again, obviously, it's it can be industry specific, um, and I think that sometimes, you know, as the employer and the employee work through the process and the kinks, they begin to discern, you know, what are the kind of tangible goals that are realistic that can keep both parties honest and feeling comfortable about, you know, verifying that they're getting their work done and they're producing and yet they're not being too micromanaged. Um, so it can be a learning experience and a give and take and figuring out how that looks and feels. Um, you know, again, there's some people that say, you know, people working at home are more productive and have a higher retention rate. Then there's some people that feel the opposite, that they're less productive, you know, and they tend to, you know, move on more quickly. So I think you can argue it from both sides. And again, it really yeah. is a very individually based component. I think that, you know, I have one employee that really is adamant. He wants to be in the office, even if he's the only one there. There's something for him about like waking up, physically going to an office setting and sitting at his office desk in that environment that he needs and he finds that he is much more productive that way. Yet, I personally don't relate to that, but it works for him and he's <laughs> crushing it. So, I mean, I personally am of the mindset and in my line of work, I'm like, I don't care where my employees work. You can be on the beach, you know, <laughs> getting an awesome tan. As long as you're producing, it doesn't right. matter to me where the heck you are, what you're doing, um, yeah. which was something I never understood with my old boss because he was the opposite. He like needed to see me. And I was like, but I'm producing. Why does that matter? It should right. be about the numbers, about the end result. Um, you know, so, you know, some people fear that, working from home, you know, it is harder to separate and, you know, there might be an increased burnout rate as a result. But again, I think it's like anything, you, the same can happen in an office. So it's right. figuring out how to obtain and maintain that balance for yourself. And sometimes you can, you know, there might be certain cycles where it it dips a little in one direction or the other and you have to reel it in or you see your productivity is, you know, declining and you look at, do an honest self-evaluation, why that is. Um, and is it related to things within your control? Um, and again, creating that routine is so important. Um, you know, but again, some people also miss kind of having that community of a work environment and that real face-to-face -face engagement. So, exactly. you know, and, you know, there is an element of it. It can be less collaborative, um, but yeah. you can also make sure that you, you know, whether you personally set up face-to-face -face time with people or do, you know, some sort of Skype or video meeting or just have scheduled meetings with your coworkers so that you still are 
cultivating those relationships. Yeah, it, it, it's just making like that adjustment. Now, um, I want to take a quick sponsor break, and then I was jotting down some notes. I have some questions, some additional questions for you. So, Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is yeah. audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are Two Brain Business 2.0, by Chris Cooper and uh, several books by Julie Morgenstern, who has been on this podcast in the past. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're speaking with Arielle Shore about the pros and cons of using remote workers. So, Aria, one of the things that I was thinking of when you were talking is um, about structuring time. Like, I remember when I started my business and suddenly I was working from home. I, I, it was great to be able to have the flexibility to go and do things at my kids' school and things like that, but I had this weird belief that I, I had from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep to get stuff done. And it turned out that I wasn't as productive as if I had said, well, I work from 8 to 5, and if there are times when I carve some of that time out, I can tack some on to another day. But for the most part, you know, when everyone comes home at the end of the day, I'm done. Mm -hmm. So, you know, talk some about some of these parameters that a remote worker should think about or can put in place so that they're really treating it like it's a work day, regardless Absolutely. of where they are. I mean, I think, again, there's, like anything, you're going to have that initial transition. I think that there can be a trial and error to that. Um, and determining kind of what structure works for you. And really, like I said, creating that routine, having time management um, getting to know yourself and what kind of works best for you in this new setting. Um, and really, you know, especially in the beginning, really being honest with yourself and saying, okay, you know, my new routine is I don't have to commute anymore, but I want to make that time productive for myself. Um, and also, you know, carving out breaks where like, this is, you know, and, and communicating that to your coworkers because it's hard sometimes you don't want to miss something. But if you were in the office, you'd go to lunch, let's say, or you'd do something and it would be okay. But suddenly if you're at home, you might feel like, oh, I can't or I shouldn't do that. But that is often something that's self-imposed. And I think the key is to be open and honest and communicative and kind of in alignment with that is like when you're, you know, letting people know, like I shut down at six, um, you know, whether it's creating an auto reply or emergencies only so that you still maintain those boundaries and you make that known across the board for people working with you and they will respect that and get it. I think, so, uh, it's so great. Um, I love the, these ideas of, of some of these boundaries because, uh, especially the taking breaks, I had to finally figure out that it was okay for me to take lunch. And actually, not only was it, not at my desk, right? And not only was it okay, but it's really good for you to take exactly. that break. You can be you're more doing, right? productive by having yeah. that little hiatus and like, doing something else or clearing your mind or just like breathing or going for a walk. Like I always in the office would tell my employees, like go take lunch, go for a walk. And they're like, I don't want, I'm like, 
you will end up invariably being more productive. Like it's, yeah. there's no need to do this. It, it's not, you know, it's not necessarily going to make your numbers better, you know? Right. So I'm right. a big proponent sort of, of that. Illusion. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is great. So um, are there, do you think there's certain industries that are resistant to remote work or is it more um, just individual managers or business owners who might have an issue with it? I mean, listen, there's certain jobs where you have and need to have that face-to-face -face interaction with your clients and, you know, it's not really replaceable, you know, maybe a one-off, you can do it remotely, but, you know, the job really is about that face-to-face -face encounter, even, you know, a doctor, let's say, like he has to see his patients, he can't, you know, do it via video chat. So I think there is an industry element and then there is that, you know, personal element too. And so I think both of them come into play and can be intertwined. And I think it's, again, really knowing yourself, knowing within your industry, how that would look and feel. And, you know, like anything, there's always pros and cons to situations and it depends how you opt and choose to look at it and what your personality type is and what tends to work for you and knowing yourself and adapting and pivoting accordingly. And sometimes yeah, you can I, I kind of dip your toe in the water. So let's say you're contemplating, oh, I've always wanted to work from home. Like nowadays there's a lot of like side things you can do. You Google like working from home or working remotely and there's different like additional jobs you can take on and that can be a nice way to kind of test the waters for yourself and see if it does work for you as an individual well, without a good idea. diving right in to use you know a pool analogy like you can make sure you like the temperature of the water and that you feel comfortable before you just go in the deep end right and that's interesting because I think um, an employer could do the same. And if an, if an employee went to an employer with a, you know, a really compelling argument for at least trying it, uh, they could agree to do a pilot program. That you don't have to do it wholesale. Maybe you do it one day a week yep. until you get used to it and see how it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, often, you know, listen, it's change can be hard for anyone and, you know, especially let's say, you know, a boss who's more old school or a company that has always done things a certain way, you know, people can be resistant to change. And it's often hard to be that first person to try to implement that. But, mm -hmm. you know, it has to start with someone. And, you know, a lot of times, even when I first talked about it with my old company, when I was having children, he was like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, listen, you can either have me part-time in the office and part-time at home or nothing. So <laughs> that's know what you want, you know? <laughs> and that, that was the reality. And obviously he's like, okay, I'll take part-time, <laughs> you know, but it was, right. you know, it was, I personally at that time did still like going into the office, I realized, because I did like, you know, having a newborn baby, like I felt disconnected. And even though I was working from home, it's still, I was like, oh my God, I need to get away. I need to breathe. I can't just be like a baby milk machine. So it was nice to kind of feel like a real person and having that separation for myself. Um, but now as they're older, it's also nice to be able to like, be able to go to school events and, right. you know, build that in without having to add the commute time and add different factors that, you know, can ultimately detract and take 
add stress and take time away from working or make me have to take a whole day off for like an hour play. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But I do, I mean, I, I, sorry, I, for, I always, um, you know, encourage women, especially because, you know, we're of an age where like women are being told and rightly so, like you can potentially do any job that you want. And, but the reality that still exists for women is we are still the ones to physically give birth and have children. And with that invariably can a complications can arise and you do need to recover (laughs) even though I thought I was super woman and I did like literally as I was giving birth I was still like sending emails on my new black you know (laughs) but you know the truth is like I had no idea what I was in for and I felt like I was hit by like a mass truck and I was like oh my god I can't move like I don't know what to do and you know physically you can't always you know you have a c-section or things come up and so you want to and I think it's important and nowadays you have that optionality more than ever to be able to be in a career that can provide that flexibility which is incredible and it's amazing and it's really you know a game changer and thank goodness yes truly right we can get mm-hmm. everyone else to- um, no, it used to be okay. you had to like choose, you know. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So now you mentioned uh, sending emails uh, while you're in labor. So it <laughs> brings me to a question, <laughs> oddly enough. Uh, if you have tips for people um, to be able to like really be present in both their professional and their personal life when you know, maybe because they're working remotely, they've got this like constantly on for work feeling. Yes. And I can actually personally attest and talk to that because that was and is my reality often. And I felt the need and kind of prided myself on being like that person to always respond right away. Like anyone can reach me 24 seven. I'm going to be on it and I'm going to respond. And that was like part of my identity. And as my children got older, they were like, mommy, why are you always on your phone? And then they're playing and pretending to be on their phones, like with toys. And they're pretending they're like working and being on a phone the whole time. That was how they were playing. And I suddenly was like looking in the mirror and realized, oh my gosh, this is not good. (laughs) They think that, and I was, I was always like, I was physically there, but I wasn't fully present. And they were registering that and then mimicking that. And that didn't feel or look good to me. And that's when I was like, okay, I need to reevaluate this and figure out how I can like, it's okay not to respond in that first minute. And sometimes it's even better, you know? And that was a hard concept and feeling for me to grasp, but it has been invaluable and it has enabled me. And I now can say to my kids where I couldn't before, like, all right, mommy needs a half hour more of work and then my phone is going to be put away and I'm all about you guys. Where before it was like half and half and I was never fully engaged in either. And I was trying and thinking I was doing both, but I wasn't fully yeah. present or giving either side a hundred percent. And yeah. right. subsequently I set real boundaries and time frames for myself and, you know, dinner time until bedtime, I try to really only check my phone very periodically and I make a concerted effort and I have everyone put their phones away during dinner and during family time because it's too easy and it's a crutch and now my kids are older, they all have phones. And so all of a sudden, 
you look and everyone's on their phone or you're out to dinner and you look around at the tables and it's like, no one's talking. They're all at a table together, but they're all in their own world. Yeah. And it's scary and it's not okay. And no. you see that and it just is like, whoa, you know, and so it's really been amazing. And I, I felt better, even though initially it was very hard. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember my brother used to be like, do you think you're the president? Even the president doesn't have to be like tied to his phone. I'm like, well, it's easier to be the president because this is my own company and people need things. And I pride myself on being that person 24 seven, but I can still do it within an hour. You know, like nothing that major is going to change in that time frame. Right. <laughs> and I don't think it's good for people to think that they they can get reach you at any time, you know, because then when they can't, it, it, it goes against what you've conditioned them for. Exactly. Yeah. It's really mm -hmm. not good. No, no. And people respect it. People get it. You know, listen, yeah. we're in an Asian time frame where like, we're all struggling with comparable, you know, balancing juggling scenarios and so right. you know as long as you again you have a structure in place and again that can deviate you can realize something works something doesn't you can be fluid it's not like this is the end all be all and like you know you figure out what works and what doesn't and then adjust accordingly yeah. and that can change with time as well yeah, and I think the other thing it allows is that then if something comes up and, and you can't put the phone down, you know, there's like I was doing a training the other day and my son was out of town and he was really sick. And so when I walked into the training, I said, I don't normally do this, but my phone is going to be on the table. And if he calls me, we're taking a break mm -hmm. so that I can make sure he's okay. Well, everybody understands that because mm -hmm. almost everybody has kids or parents that are ailing or, you know, we're all in this weird yes. world. And so we have compassion for each other that, and understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I used to be embarrassed or not want to show a human side or vulnerability or, you know, I wanted to present as like, you know, I can do everything and no one needs to know anything else, but that I'll be there. But like the truth is like everyone gets it and they understand yeah. and it's okay. And you're a better, right. you know, employer or employee or parent as a result or spouse, you know. Right. Cause you can identify it's relatable. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, and sooner or later, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah, really great. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting time that we're in because, you know, 10 years ago, this wasn't even a real viable option. And, right. you know, now things have totally shifted and it really is. And so it's, you know, navigating that and, you know, adjusting accordingly and figuring it out. And again, it, it is often that trial and error. Well, exactly. And I think if, if you do it in, like if the employer and the employee work together and do it in a collaboration, then you figure out what is the best way for this to work. So maybe it's like my niece had a baby about a year and a half ago and so she, when she went back to work, she only went to the office two days a week. And my sister would go over and, and watch the baby. And so it, it was this gradual transitional sort of thing to where she felt like it was doable. She would go in. She'd go to meetings if she had to. So that it was flexible. It wasn't this rigid, it's one or the other. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be one or the other. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the other thing is, you know, realizing it's not it doesn't have to be black or white right and there can be those gradations and 
those again can fluctuate with time too. Right. That's right. Yeah. And you figure um, when you have that sort of flexibility and you're keeping an eye on it, then, because who knows what's going to be the next thing that, that makes work easier to be productive no matter where you are. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I um, would never have thought, you know, when my 14 year old was born that this would be our world. Yeah. Right. You know, like exactly. it was still like, you know, there were no smartphones. It was like the Blackberry was just coming out and was so expensive. And I, again, I did feel very cool to have one. Um, <laughs> but it was, you know, a different, very, very different world. And, yeah. you know, it's crazy to think. And it's even, you know, on so many fronts, you know, whether it's like even DVDs and VCRs are like obsolete and, you know, my kids don't even, you know, I say things, they're like, what are you talking about? I'm yeah. like, <laughs> you know, even like the other day I was like watching an old movie with a payphone. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot. Like, yeah. There used to be payphones. We needed those payphones. Like there aren't payphones in the streets anymore. No. There's charging stations. <laughs> right, so exactly. It's, it's a totally new world. Yeah, it's crazy. It's really, yeah. really crazy. So... Yeah. We will see. Well, we will. It's fun <laughs> to watch, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Be flexible. Oh, Definitely. my gosh. Well, uh, Ariel, I, I thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing some of these viewpoints. I think it's really great if employers sort of, you know, keep an open mind and, and consider what makes the most sense for them and their employees because it's about the results. It's not about physically where people are. It's about how they're able to contribute to the end goal. So uh, exactly. will you tell the listeners, you know, how they can find out about you and, and your company and what you got going on, please? Of course. Um, so we do have a website and it is ABS and that's A as an apple, B as in boy, S as in Sam, staffing solutions.com. And on there is all of our contact information. I also have my direct email, which is just my first name, A-R-I-E-L at A-B-S staffing solutions.com. So I really appreciate your time and allowing me to share my insights and perspectives and personal experiences. and. Um, this was fun. Excellent. Well, I always enjoy having you on, so thank you very much. Yes, and listeners, sir. thank you. This, this is uh, another uh, great episode where you get something to think about, maybe a little differently than you were thinking about before. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Audible.com. To get your free trial of Audible.com as well as a free audiobook, just go to audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth to sign up. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Imagine how fast we could solve the world's biggest problems if more SaaS startups would gain traction sooner. Welcome to the Tech Entrepreneur on a Mission podcast. This podcast is dedicated to sharing experiences from B2B SaaS CEOs who are going above and beyond to deliver change that is noticed. You will hear their secrets and learn what is required to build a SaaS business that the world starts talking about and keeps talking about, and how to overcome the roadblocks to do so.